Negative autoregulation results when a transcriptional repressor is placed downstream of a promoter that is under its own control. In this paper by Alon and co-workers, they demonstrate that regulation with this pattern can speed up the response time of a gene. They define rise time as the delay from the initiation of production until half maximal product concentration is reached. Using a combination of modeling and experiment, they demonstrate that this pattern can accelerate the rise time fivefold. They describe two different gene configurations. In the first case, GFP is placed under a simple transcriptional unit composed of the TET promoter. TET promoter is repressed by the TET repressor, TET-R. Addition of the small molecule in hydrotetracycline, or ATC, will derepress TET-R resulting in transcription. In the other case, the negative autoregulatory circuit, the promoter is still a TET promoter, but TET-R is being expressed from a second constitutive TET-R gene. GFP is also fused to TET-R. Thus, expression of the TET promoter results in production of the TET-R-GFP fusion protein, which then shuts down its own expression. Negative feedback is a very common motif observed in genes encoding transcription factors. This is particularly true for sigma factor and histidine kinase genes. One potential explanation for this is that negative feedback affects the response time of the gene. In this study, the authors are comparing the rise time with and without the negative feedback. To do this, they use some differential equation modeling and analysis to show that the rise time is different between the two circuits. And they also build the two circuits shown here and follow the dynamics by monitoring single cells using fluorescence microscopy. Let's go through the math. First, let's consider the rise time of the simple transcription unit. Since there is no feedback in this circuit, A is constant and has the value beta which is the transcription initiation rate of the non-repressed promoter. The rate of change of protein X, or dx dt, is equal to the production rate A minus the first order dilution or degradation term minus alpha times X. As time approaches infinity, the system will reach a steady state in which the synthesis and dilution balance each other out. To solve for the value of X in this state, we set dx dt equal to zero, and solve for x, which turns out to be beta over alpha. If we solve the differential equation for x as a function of time, and then divide through by this beta over alpha value for the steady state, we get that this ratio is 1 minus e to the negative alpha t. When this has a value of half, we are at half maximum. If we assume that dilution caused by cell growth dominates the alpha term, then this means that the deviation of x from its steady state value will drop by half each cell cycle. Thus the rise time of the circuit is one cell cycle. The cell cycle time is described by the variable tau. Thus tr, the response time, is equal to tau. To model the negative feedback circuit, we start with the same equation, but now we will not assume that A is constant, but rather that it has a rate that depends on the concentration of the transcription factor X. This is the scenario we encountered before when we did Shea Acker's modeling of repression, where we said that the fraction of promoters available for transcription is given by 1 over 1 plus R. Here R is X, so we get an expression a of t equals beta divided by 1 plus x over k, where k is the binding constant for the transcription factor to the promoter. Again, we make a steady state assumption and solve for x and get this expression. If the repressor has very strong affinity for its binding site, then beta over alpha will be much greater than k, and the math simplifies to the square root of k beta over alpha. Solving the differential equation and dividing by the steady state value, we get an expression for the deviation from steady state. That will reach a value of 50% when t equals 0.21 times tau. Thus, the negative autoregulatory circuit reaches its new steady state in one-fifth the time of the open circuit. They go on to analyze and discuss other aspects of the math and its dependence on variables you might think to tune in the system. In addition to the response time, there is also a different steady state concentration. The first circuit reaches a steady state concentration of beta over alpha, while the second circuit reaches the square root of k beta over alpha. If we assume the same promoter and strain for both circuits, 
the values of beta and alpha will be the same to a first approximation, and the second circuit will plateau at a lower x concentration than the open one. Experimentally, the two circuits could be rebalanced by changing the minus 35 and minus 10 sequence of the open circuit. By putting in a weaker promoter, a lower value of beta is achieved, and the two circuits will reach similar steady state concentrations. Doing so would not change the relative response time as that only depends on alpha in both cases. If, for example, you added a degradation tag to the protein, you could achieve faster degradation than dilution, but this would not change the result. The value of tau just gets replaced with a faster value. As long as we aren't adding any translational control mechanisms into the mix, it doesn't matter if we change the ribosome binding site or sequence of the protein. The effect should be the same. The autoregulatory circuit is always five times faster than the open one. Finally, they build the two circuits and follow fluorescence over time. And indeed, without the negative feedback shown in black lines, the system has a much slower response time than the autoregulated ones in colored lines.